I want them to smash us 5-0. That's Tom, our producer, who's a Tottenham fan. Tottenham <laughs> against Man City. This is surreal, this game. <laughs> Normally you don't step into a game, friend of the bus, haven't I? Normally you don't step into a game with the whole fan base desperate for their team to lose. But Tottenham against Man City seems to be one of them. This is so awkward, I think, for a lot of people. What If you've got a ticket to that game... What are people going to be stepping into here? Like, it's going to be so weird, isn't it? It's just so weird for Spurs fans because I'm trying to put myself in Spurs fans' shoes. They have a very good record against City in the league. They've never lost to City in the league at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. It was only in the FA Cup, which Nathan Ake scored. So they, they're probably going to this game thinking, oh, you know what? We have a really good game. Um, we have a really good record against City. Yeah, but I hope they But... They need to lose at the end of the day. They, or need, they, to they lose, need to lose. lose. Need as, to as a fan, Spurs need to lose to not see Arsenal go, go on and win the Premier League. So it's like, do you, would you rather your rivals win the league? No. At your expense? No. So yeah. it's, it's such a weird one for Spurs. I feel like they're just going to have to support their team. But if, they're, if City's score, they'll just be like, just a little <laughs> fist pump and that's about it. Because what's, I mean, what's less respectable? the desire for your own team to lose or sort of wanting to go and win but then having to deal with the oh cheers lads definitely the latter <laughs> <laughs> like as a as a a fan of any club if your rival team wins the league because of you that, that that's going to be used against you forever mm. it's not like arsenal have won the league every year that this is oh this is just another scenario they could win it in they haven't won it in ages so you put that into context and suddenly like spurs could be their own Villain it makes no sense, but yeah. that's the situation I'm in. Honestly, if I'm a Spurs fan, I'm walking in the stadium going, City, I'm <laughs> chatting City the whole game. Do you think, um, is there not? I'm playing devil's advocate here, but like, is there not like the professionalism card? I reckon Ange is. I, I'm really intrigued to see if Ange blinks with this one as well, where he goes because they're on a bad run. I think the gung ho approach is one where it's it's you kind of can't have it all. Like, do you want him to kind of play like that? Mm. But it's obviously stage one of three or four sort of stages that they need to get to in terms of being better as a team, managing the ball better and to stop the, you know, the waves of attack that come in transition the other way. But the games they've just played, they've played Newcastle at St. James's who have got their players back. Obviously the conceding four, it's not, it's not great. Then you've got, um, well, in that run, you've got Chelsea in there. They never beat Chelsea. Arsenal, it's North London Derby against the best, one of the best teams in the league and Liverpool, who are the third best team in the league. So I think, are they as bad as it looks? It doesn't feel like they're as bad as it looks, but they are conceding so many goals. Yeah, the thing is, they're conceding a lot of goals, and that's kind of down to Ange and Spurs, the way they, the way they play. So looking at this from a Spurs perspective, Spurs can go play their normal game, probably get battered, and Ange is going to be like, oh, it's, it's who we are, mate. Do you right. know what I mean? That's all he's going to say. So it's kind of, as a Spurs fan, you can kind of expect that. And I don't think they're going to change just because of the scenario and everything that's going on. I feel like they will still play that high line. And even if they do and they try and play football, City can outplay them. I feel like now with City, if this wasn't having Arsenal, having them in the background, and I feel like City need to go to Spurs and get something, I would be quite worried for City because they just that's just been Pep Guardiola's bogey team. However, this is British summertime City where when it comes when, when the clocks go forward I love your phrase <laughs> when the clocks go forward City are just on business they haven't lost a title race and when it comes to this they just know what to do and I feel like they will get the result at the end of the day they do look clinical and fresh yeah. don't yeah. they it's absolutely amazing that and that front line as well what what adds fear to I mean it's not, again it's not fear I don't really know like I'm, I'm sort of taking the fear for Tottenham fans here but in terms of what could be this could be a massacre this mm. could be bad because if you've got a team that doesn't want them to win, a, a, a fan base that is cheering the mm. goals that your team is scoring against them, and the gung-ho approach of Tottenham that leaves so much space in transition, and a, f a sort of front three behind Haaland, if that makes sense, of Foden, KDB and Silva, and then Kovacic and Rodri possibly behind them, mm. who are, all of them, utterly press-proof. The sort of bogey team thing, I'm struggling with a little bit. I, think I don't think that works because that's a different team. That's, mm. that's last year, defend for your lives, get it to Kane, get it to Sun, see what you can do with yeah. the spaces. I think behind. also the last few seasons, it was Conte and Mourinho. So like the, the, you knew exactly what Spurs were going to do. I don't think Ange has that in him. Um, and also the, the, the question of like, are oh, Spurs just going to roll over? I, when I look at that team, like 
who actually cares about that rivalry. Like maybe Madison does, maybe Saunders, but Richarlison still wants to score goals, man. Like that's, that's his thing. Kulusevski, like no one actually that's cares it, about the rivalry. If the Spurs fans are like booing their own team and cheering City, ain't gonna happen. Not yeah. gonna do it that vocally. Then it's a different thing. But I just look at that City team and I go, bringing Kovacic in was like a, a brilliant move from Pep. I don't know why he's waited so long, but now they've got a bit more control in midfield. They're not desperate to get it get it out wide early. They can give it to Kovacic. who look after it really looks after it really well. They've got a settled back four. Um, on paper, I just think that this City team right now, I don't actually care about the opposition. Like I, in my eyes, like. If Madrid turned up, which they had, and City outplayed them as well, yeah. I just think they're not bothered at this stage of the season. Mm. Let's talk about Haaland, because <laughs> he scored four goals. Two of them penalties against Wolves, uh, seven shots in total, all in central areas. We've spoken about that, the sort of three behind him with Foden, KDB and Silva all playing together. Uh, do you feel like he's back, or was he never gone? Or where are you at with Haaland at the moment? I've got my own opinions, but... He never left. He never left. I know Roy Keane was saying that, oh, he plays like a League 2 player, and I get where Roy Keane was coming from. Do you? No, I, th- not League 2, of course. He's not a League 2 player, but he's not... We look at City in the way No play. disrespect to League 2. And no disrespect to League 2 at all. <laughs> yeah. But we see the way City play and the, with the style of playing and technical ability, and Haaland doesn't have that in a sense. And him looking at this, um, playing in this City team, he looks kind of exposed. So I get where Roy Keane was coming from. But when Roy Keane said that, he was still top goal scorer of the Premier League. Like, it's absolutely ridiculous. And I think, I think people don't like Haaland because of what he done last season. Everyone was thinking, okay, he's scoring all these goals in the Champions League and Bundesliga. Oh, wait till you get to the Premier League. Come to the Premier League, smashes the record. Yeah. And that just kind of hurt us as Premier League fans because we're thinking, oh, we have the best league in the world. This guy's just rocked up and just completely smashed everyone's record. This is Cristiano Ronaldo's record, Henri's record, Mo Salah's record. He just took it for granted and just done it like that. So I feel like that's where that's kind of stemming from. Mm-hmm. He never left. He's now on 25 goals. He's going to win another golden boot and he hasn't had a great season, which unfortunately, if that was my striker, I would have this Haaland season every season at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. I, did, I did a video on him uh, after the exit in the Champions League. And the thing I, I said was, I, we looked at his movement and there were moments where he had really nice movement when there was that bit of space in behind. Really, really clever from that point of view. He'd become a bit one-dimensional in terms of in the box because he was just peeling to that back post and that cross kind of wasn't coming and his confidence confidence had dropped a little bit. I also said in the video that he, between now and the end of the season, he could easily score double the amount of anyone else. Mm. (laughs) Because the thing with him is he's binary. He's either scoring goals or he's useless because he's not about that bit. He's about that bit. And his whole career will be based on the amount of goals that he scores because he doesn't have that many shots. He's a dominant player who, you know, if you make it, we always use that, that Shaquille O'Neal um, analogy there, but he's just chilling under the rim, isn't he? Like waiting to get yeah. the ball and, and do what he does, which is, you know, score points, score goals, whatever. So, uh, yeah, I don't think he was ever going to go anywhere. For the one thing I'm, I'm always going to wonder is a, a full season without KDB, without a, someone with that similar service for him, Man assists he got last year from KDB and KDB coming back I think is, is such a help for him um, because he's able to find him so easily um, in terms of the, the spacing behind for Haaland in this game he's got to be licking his lips isn't he? He is but also there is um, Van der Ven in there who is that the fastest human I've ever seen around. Yeah. <laughs> like that, and also he rips his hamstring every time he runs every single time he goes for a full sprint he goes on the floor straight after and then gets straight yeah. back up but I do think for Haaland if I'm him I'm peeling off on Romero I think Romero's actually been very good this season um, but if you've got to get beyond someone and you saw in the Wolves game and the Forest game actually he makes this run where he starts with his back turn to goal and then he like back pedals into a position where he can receive the ball and then runs at the centre back if you do that with Mickey van der Ven he'll run next to you and, and that's his strength whereas Romero does switch off sometimes he'll try and dive in and the pass will come beyond um, so yeah I think You'd imagine he's going to score a few goals in this game. This game feels like it's made for Haaland and De Bruyne. Like it's just like De Bruyne picks it up on the halfway line, Haaland sets off, ball behind, goal. Yeah, it does feel like that. Let's let's get our sort of breakdowns of the game. Then how do you how do you think it will play out? Um, I'll go first, shall I? I think um, the one thing I do think is huge here. And obviously, it always is, but is is the game state? I th- I feel like if it's going to be. S- extra weird if Tottenham take the lead mm. and the way they play extra weird <laughs> yeah is that big <laughs> the, um, <laughs> uber weird if uh, yeah if they get that first goal because they won't really know what to do with themselves but they are a team that will have a go and so even in the Arsenal game you look at the stats and take away the goals it actually looks like you know Tottenham have been all over them but the game state was different Arsenal scored the first mm. goal second goal third goal and it was just it, that made it so much different 
So if Tottenham score first, it could be fun. Regardless, Man City will win, though, yeah. in my opinion. Uh, and I think I just can't see how they don't score three if these other guys are scoring three against a, a team that is not totally up for it. Um, I think, yeah, could get ugly. It could be it could be a hell of a lot of goals. What do you think, Tim? I think it could be a hell of a lot of goals. I think City will score. There's no doubt about that. I know they will finally score their first goals uh, at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in the Premier League. But I think Spurs will score too. Even if Spurs have been not playing well in these past couple of games, they did score two against Arsenal at the end of the day. They did score two against Liverpool. And I know these are teams that can see, but Arsenal don't really concede that much. So Spurs will score. It's just a matter of will the Spurs fans egg them to go on score on more? Who knows? That's why I'm really looking forward to it. Because as you said, it's just going to be super weird. Honestly, I just want an early City goal. And Spurs fans, just camera panning Spurs fans. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I want to see. Um, I'm gonna go two one, um, only because I just like the whole narrative is about Spurs gonna down tools, City gonna batter them. I just feel like football never works out that way. 